Welcome to the Badass is the New Black podcast. This is part three of Build a Badass Brand on Social Media. I'm your host, Chrissy Chin. Here on the podcast, we chat all things business and personal growth. To give you the edge, you need to identify and attract your ideal client, to crush your sales, to scale your business so you can live the life that you dream of, which is working less and enjoying more. In episode 15, part one, we covered transforming your bio from boring to badass to attract more ideal clients. This helps catch people's attention right away and increase the chances that they stick around and get to know you a little bit more. In episode 16, we talked about taking better and more attractive branded photos. That episode helps you be attractive visually and to attract more people to, again, stick around. And today we're going to talk about creating the content for your posts. This is the part that keeps your people coming back for more and more and more. Just like most of the things that I teach on here, the principles can be applied to many other things. So while I'm kind of talking about creating content for your social media posts, you can certainly use these tips and tricks for creating blog content or YouTube videos or different events or podcasts. Really anything that you need to create valuable information for, you can use these tips and tricks. So why is this topic so important? It's important because it takes up to 20 impressions for someone to actually pull the trigger on buying something. So if they come to your account and you get them to hit that follow button because A, you had a badass bio and maybe your profile picture looked really exciting and inviting and then the images that they saw on your feed, they were vibing with. So now they're sticking around. Now they're going to be a little bit nosy and they're going to poke into your content. And if they're not connecting with your content, they may leave or maybe they've stuck around, they're following you and they're seeing your content every other day or every day or every week. And if they're not vibing with it because it's not really a part of your brand message and it doesn't resonate them, they will leave, right? Leave before buying. And that is not what we want. We want them to stick around. We want to, them to keep engaging until the point that they buy. So it's important to be very, very intentional about what you're putting out there and how you are putting it out there. It's also very important to be consistent so that when your person is finally ready to buy, remember I said it could take up to 20 times of them seeing this you know, offer, you want to be in front of them. If you are not consistent and you go radio silent just before they're ready to buy, they're going to go find someone else that's showing up on the regular and they're going to buy from them, which is not what we want. So while I want you to consider everything that I've talked about in this series so far and everything that I talk about today, I also don't want you to get overwhelmed by overthinking this. Perfecting your bio probably already gave you a lot of clarity on what you want to talk about and what you want to post about. So, um, this is the part where we get even more intentional and more organized with content creation. And some of you, I think, just peed your pants a little bit when I said the word organized. Half of you got really excited because you are crazy OCD and I love you to death. And the other half of you had a little panic pee because you heard the word organization and that's like your kryptonite, right? I'm the latter of the two. Organization is not my strong suit. I'm always working on systems and process to make things more organized in my business so it's more manageable so I can work less and enjoy more. All right, so the organization piece really, really does make a difference. So now I want you to, or now that you know more about your brand, who you're serving, the problems that you're solving, and the solutions you are providing, it's time to create some content marketing. Yes, I said the word marketing. You're like, oh my God, marketing. I don't know anything about marketing. It's okay. All right, each one of your posts is technically marketing, right? You're marketing your brand through your content. So what's the definition of content marketing? It's a creation like an image, a blog post, a podcast, a social media post that conveys your beliefs and creativity so that someone will know if they are aligned with you, okay? That's what we want. We want them to know that they're aligned with you. All right, so we're going to talk about planning a content calendar. It can feel very overwhelming to think about, oh my gosh, I have to come up with 52 topics to post on my podcast once a week. 
or to release my podcast once a week. Oh my gosh, if I'm going to post three times a week, that means I have to come up with 156 posts to be posting three times a week for the next year, right? How many of you just got super over overwhelmed thinking about that? What if you're going to, what if you're going to post five days a week? Ah, right. But I want to challenge you to look at content creation in a different way so that it feels a lot less overwhelming. And I'm going to break it down for you. All right. So you have your overall brand message. If you don't have that, you need to come up with that. Okay. Listen to the other uh, podcast episodes, help you come up with your brand message. Uh, so write that down. First, I want you to come up with four pillars for your brand. What are four very different things that you can talk about that all fall under your brand? Okay. So people call these pillars. Some people call these buckets. We're going to call these pillars. All right. These are four topics that you talk about over and over and over and over again. So I want them to be different and diverse types of content. For example, my pillars are one, finding clients or an ideal client avatar, right? Um, second is branding. Third is marketing slash sales. And a fourth one is scaling, which leads to profits. So kind of in that category. So I have four very different things that I talk about that all fit under my brand message. A fitness coach might talk about diet as one pillar, exercise as another, confidence as another, and maybe they're really into um, macro and micro calculating. So maybe that's another one of their pillars. Um, a network marketer in the beauty in industry. Uh, maybe their four pillars are skin health, overall health, confidence, and girl power. So come up with your four pillars that fit under your brand, four very different things that you talk about. Just think about the things that you talk about all the time already and break that down into four categories. Write them down. Then once you have those four pillars, I want you to make a list of 10 things that you can talk about in each pillar. So here's an example for mine. I'm, you know, for my business coaching brand, one of my pillars is your ideal client avatar. So the person, your, the, the person that you want to be your ideal client or your ideal client. You get it? Okay. Uh, here are a handful of things I could talk about. One topic could be I could talk about niching down. Another topic I could be a talk, talking about identifying your client. Another one could be learning how your ideal client thinks. Another poster topic I could talk about is identifying the problems of your ideal client. Another topic could be identifying the solutions or the transformation your ideal client is looking for. I could also talk about finding ideal clients online. I could talk about finding ideal clients through ads. I could talk about finding ideal clients at events. All right, so, so you see how I have this main topic of ideal clients? And then I can literally break it down into a bunch of things to talk about. Okay. So once you have your four pillars and then you're going to write down 10 things under each pillar, then we're going to move on and break it down even further. I want you to, um, for each mini topic, so for the 10 that you came up with, I want you to then come up with a post um, with a different type of posts for each topic. Now let me tell you what a type is. So there's four different types of content. There's teaching content, there's inspiration content, there's connection content, and there's sales content. So teaching content, which could be two types. It could be theoretical teaching or it could be action-based teaching. The art is finding a way to teach that makes it really unique to you. And this is why people want to stick around and learn from you, right? Because you're teaching in a unique way. And that might take some time to discover. All right, inspiration-based content. This makes people feel like they can do it too, okay? So you're inspiring them through your story that they can do it too. So I was a nurse before I got into network marketing, before I started my own company. I had no business background, no MBA. And so talking about my journey from going from a nurse into business and having this very, very successful online business, that inspires others who are in the same boat, 
right? It inspires them that it doesn't matter if you don't have a business background or business degree, like go for it. I'm inspiring to do that too. So that's another type of content. And then there's connection content. This is the content that gets your audience to say, oh my gosh, me too. You share something about yourself and if you can get them to say, OMG, me too, you're creating a connection with them. They think, gosh, I'm like you. You are like me. We are alike. And so they feel more connected to you. They feel like they fit into your tribe. They trust you more. When they're connected to you, they also start associating things with you. For example, my podcast is called Badass is the New Black, right? I put workshops on that are called uh, Build a Badass Bio. People now associate the word badass with me, which I think is super cool, okay? I don't think that I'm super badass, but like I just love it so much, like the word and like people trying to be really badass, so I just love it. And so people will see a quote that has the word badass in it. They'll screenshot it and they'll send me a DM and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I thought of you. Or, you know, they'll see something out there like a t-shirt or something that says badass on it. And they'll send me a picture of it and be like, hey, you should get this shirt. So they're associating my brand with me. And so that means they're thinking about me when they're not actually seeing me or listening to me, which is pretty cool. All right, and then you have sales content. And so this is content where you ask for the sale. And there's a couple different types. You can do the buy now content or you can do the buy later. The buy now literally asks them to open up their wallet now and buy it now. Buy later uh, puts them into a sales funnel, okay? So once you have your four pillars and your 10 mini topics, I want you to come up with the four types of content for each mini topic. Okay, so your one, my one little mini topic that's how to find your ideal client online. I'm going to come up with a teaching post about it, a inspirational post about it, a connection post about it, and then I could come up with a sales post. Okay, so once you've done that, four pillars, 10 mini topics, and four types of content for each, you're going to have 160 posts. You guys, that's enough posts for three times a week. You see how when we break it down like that, it can be a lot less overwhelming. So you can do this for this, the same way for if you want to start a blog or you want to start a podcast. For the whole year, 52 kind of sounds overwhelming, right? Like, oh my gosh, I have to come up with 52 podcasts. But if I break it down, okay, I have my four pillars, my four things I talk about. And then I could just come up with four topics under them. And then I could have three to four types of content. So one could be a teaching podcast. One could be all about inspiration, like inspiring them in that little topic, right? So if I have three to four in each, then I'll have between 48 and 64 things to talk about, okay? And there's 52 weeks in a year, so right in between, you're good to go. All right. Then I like to take things, so like there's that. Um... I could probably make this a whole separate podcast, but I'm going to lump it into this. So if that's all you can consume today, (laughs) you can stop the podcast. But I love strategy, so I'm going to dive a little bit into um, using these pillars, topics, and type of content to be even more strategic with your calendar. Let's take a tiny little break from this badass podcast to talk about Kajabi, or as my husband calls it, Punjabi. Babe, it starts with a K. K K-A-J-A-B-I. This is the platform that literally makes all the magic happen. It's plug and play, no coding necessary, and guess what, you guys? The best thing about it is that you get your very own mobile app with it. I looked into building an app, and it was going to be over $100,000. You get your own right there the platform is so affordable too. So instead of paying for individual platforms like your CRM system, which is gonna host your email, your landing pages, which is gonna capture your email, your website, which is gonna be where all the magic happens, a community space, it's literally all in one. So it doesn't matter if you wanna host courses, educational classes, have libraries in there for your team, this is absolutely the way to go. And I have a month free for you to check it out. So hop over to my website, thechrissychin.com forward slash Kajabi, K-A-J-A-B-I, and you can check out a month for free. I cannot wait to see what you create. 
please do me a favor. Send me a DM, send me an email once you've created something so I can see it and check it out. Can't wait for you to get started and scale your business like a badass boss. All right, let's get back to the podcast. So look at your calendar and see if there's a place where you've got a product launching or you're hosting an event, okay? Or maybe you're releasing um, a new online product or your company is releasing a product and you know about it. Whatever it is, look at your calendar to see when things are launching, events, or you're doing a big sales launch. And then plan your content backwards. So you know that you're going to be doing your sales posts when, the, when you're asking for the sale or to get them into the sales funnel. But before that, what are you doing? You should be leveraging your teaching content, your connection content, and your inspiration content that will all lead up to the sales content. So if you have, so let's, for example, I was doing an event called Build a Badass Bio. And so before the event, I was posting teaching content about it. Why is it important? All that kind of stuff. I was giving inspiration. You can do it too. It's amazing. Look at these other people that have done it. I was doing connection. Doesn't this feel overwhelming? Aren't you lost? So it was all surrounded around that topic, that pillar, right? Or even that little subtopic in that pillar. And so I was posting all of that to get them into this event. And the sales was kind of, there was no like monetary sales for that event, but it was leading them into that event. And so that was like the sales, getting them to opt in, right? Um, so my content was very focused on that. Teaching others why is important. Sharing content that got them to connect with me, say me too, was really important. Inspiring that they can do it too was really important so that they could buy into what was going on and be excited by it, right? I built a lot of momentum sharing those posts leading up to the event. So I use different types of um, content, but all around one topic to build the momentum. And I had over 700 people register and I grew my email list by 550 people. And that was just leveraging social media and existing email lists. No paid ads to do that. All right, so recap, consistency matters. Keeping your content on brand keeps people sticking around. Having different topics um, that you talk about and then you come up with mini topics for each. And then using the four types of content to educate, inspire, connect, and sell. I also recommend batch creating. So sitting down just like we talked about in the last episode with your photos, spending designated intentional time to come up with your photo content, come up with your copy content. So sit down, plan it out. What is the intention here? What do I want to talk about? Okay, this week, let's focus on this. Let's break it down into these different posts. You can even create three months at a time. Imagine how amazing that would feel if you could have three months of content done. Like you didn't have to think about the next three months, right? Um, all right. And then also working backwards from events and from launches, launches, be strategic, know what's happening in the future so that you can work backwards and plan all of that content to be very intentional to lead to the sale. All right. That's it. This week, I want you to schedule some time for batch creation and planning out your content calendar. And then I want you to take a screenshot of you listening to this podcast on your phone, wherever, and then share it in your stories. Tag me so that I know that you're a part of this badass boss babe, babe tribe and sharing it on your social will allow your fellow boss babes to also get access to this little teaching content. All right. That's it. We'll see you next week. Bye.